They get good at wiping their butts. <laughs> okay, so I'm actually forgetting what I'm doing, which is tweeting that we're doing tweeting this. Tweeting that we're doing this. So I should, okay, so the auto tweet that goes out says whatever the title of the stream is. So I need to put the name of the game we're playing in the title so people can see it, because I feel like I need to post that afterwards. So. Um, I just got an email from Twitch telling me that Durangatang is Hi there. Live. Thank you very much for playing The Beginner's Guide. My name is Davey Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff. And his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But what I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. What's but of course, it destroys Davey. the illusion that this Davey. actually is a desert town, Davey. and Davey. instead this level becomes a kind of calling player? card from its creator. It's uh, like a reminder that this video game game was constructed by a real person, and it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point, he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made. Until suddenly one day, he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. Is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. Mr. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, Mr. then Mr. I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. We'll probably be talking so about this So thanks for joining um, me on this. If you have a particular a interpretation that I yeah. haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. So just to As each game is loaded, I'll away, show you the date that bold. it was completed. <laughs> this first one was made in November 2008. So uh, how fictional is this person that made these games? I don't know. So what I can say for sure about Davey that I know, who I should... Massive caveat. I've had like two conversations with Davey ever, and I doubt that he remembers me because they were at parties, and I happened to have already played his stuff, so I had a context for him. Yeah. Um, I know on his website the stuff about talking about struggling with creative decisions. Back in the day, he had a blog uh, and talked about that a lot. Okay. So that, do that seems factual. If Coda's a real person, I have no idea. People were asking. This game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic oh, games you'll see from here. Pretty good. Yep, we're doing great. We're tired. <laughs> we have children. Okay. You can click to fire the gun. His of a uh, newer vintage. I love it. He, he, it's like he's over your shoulder telling you how to play the game. Yeah. It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. 
But ultimately, oh. we don't really know. Maybe he Coda thought that actually it was complete yeah. the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Enemy force Mr. Panting Man says that, uh, yes, Coda's real person. Hmm. Oh, this is My assumption was that this was just going to be like the Stanley Parable, just sort of messing with my, uh, you know, my assumptions about, yeah, my assumptions about what, game what's real and what's not, and what games are supposed to be, and yeah. What, what options. Apparently the space station has a labyrinth on it. I, uh, sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to skip you all past it. <laughs> That's a nice touch. I'm going to go... Can I go back into the labyrinth? Okay, this is the part that's interesting. I could have, maybe. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine, and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That being is powering the whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you, your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? Well, Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. <laughs> the beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for me. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it, like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. <laughs> or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria was, that you've just, just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking, but... <laughs> What's clear uh, yeah, is that Panking, after making this, it, we found it's really hard to uh, fit brain. both of us in the same shot more, comfortably, really and so we just have two cameras uh, that are pointing right so next to each other. On this and moves on to a stream of tiny Originally, I used to put the two shots on directions. opposite corners uh, when we would like, play against each other in a game or something like that, but this is actually kind of more fun. Yeah. Yeah. Double fingers. So uh, the part we kind of talked over there was him saying that that was like a transcendent moment for Coda, having that bug and realizing that he could do something a little bit crazier with a game. Well, that makes and sense. And started making really short stuff. Yep. Ah. In this game, you can only walk backwards. <laughs> That's amazing. So the thing is, Terry Cavanaugh <laughs> actually made a game that way. Uh, there's a game where if you walk if you take a step forward So it's a short and relatively minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. She stops and looks. It becomes... Wait, wait. Was that... becomes clearer there before? It may or may not have been. Yeah, I think that wasn't there until you passed it. So like, you have to pass these things to make them visible. It's a short little thought, it says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Didn't wow. need anything more than that. Which to me is why it works, because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. So I'm super it's, limited in my movement. It's slender. This is my side to side ability. Do you have to stay on the path? You're super limited. Now I'm entering. Alright. I will avoid reading stuff out loud. Oh. Go ahead. 
We all know how to read. Uh, some people are... Uh, and that's it. Okay, that's the true. meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Oftentimes, Kuda would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you gonna do? I know it's tempting, but there's actually nothing over here. Sorry. <laughs> Nice he, he, That's a very Stanley parable move. Yeah, I feel, I feel like he... Uh, I, that, that fit in really nicely with just the tone of his voice in the previous line. Like, yeah. if, if you had just gone straight for the stairs and, it, and it hadn't tried to explore the edges, you never would have heard that. Yeah. That was nicely done. I mean, that's Stanley Parable did that really well. Worth noting, uh, Stanley Parable, the released version, is a remake of a game he finished. So I think there's a, something to be said when Davey says that he doesn't think that when a game is finished, it's dead to you. Like, he went back to a game he was done with and kept polishing it until he could release it on Steam as a standalone game. Huh. Because I'm now doing to Davey what we're supposed to be doing to Coda, where we analyze the games he made. <laughs> uh... Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Coda's not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. So I'm going to not do that. <laughs> okay, well, I'll see you in 15 minutes. I'm actually minutes. making progress. Oh, look, it's creeping up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a suspicion that there's there's dialogue for me as the person who refuses to push enter. <laughs> okay. I could be wrong. This no, isn't no, no, the you're terrible. Yeah, no, that's like, no, that's true. There was there was dialogue for that other thing. Because I am making progress. Like it's happening. We just need to. Uh, you want to do like elocution stuff for a minute? Well, I, so let's see here. Um, Oh, my son pulled a lamp onto his face. Oh, that's not good. But, you know, okay, we, uh, my wife has figured out um, how to make use of our old Halloween costumes. Because, you know, we got, I got three daughters and a son. Right. And, uh, and you know, we're going to, we, we, we've had a lot of hand-me-downs over the years. It's, it's a little harder to do now. But I think we're basically just decided to own that we're a family of uh, daughters. And so uh, uh, you can't really see them very clearly, so but that's can fine. See. The, the wall is now passing by me. I am making progress. Somebody was saying it seemed like the stairs were getting longer. Oh, yeah. But yeah, no, so the, my, my son is a little pink lamb now uh, for Halloween. One of the adorable. best things about that age is he has no idea that he's wearing a costume. Yeah. <laughs> well, he knows he has something on his head. Right. He knows he's wearing a hat. <laughs> but, like, that's not that different. Yeah. He doesn't know you he's know. a lamb. Yeah. His sister's super excited that she's Bo Peep. Right, but, uh, she's, she's well aware of what's going on. Yeah. Hey guys. Um, so we know, like, I could hit enter to skip to the top, um, but I'm an unreasonable and stubborn person. <laughs> oh, good. My in-air velocity is better. Hey, Vinewood. Good to see you. So. Oh man. Oh man, we're almost there. Is he gonna make fun of us for not pushing enter? We'll find out. Maybe nothing will happen, and then we'll have learned an important lesson. <laughs> About the kind of game we're playing. Uh, no, we missed the challenge, Vinewood, uh, by about 50,000. So uh, we, didn't, we, we didn't unlock the uh, med kits. I made it. Oh, uh, now you gotta keep going. Oh, oh what's this? Yeah. Stand on X, staring at a bear for three hours. You start in a small room to until these chairs and one is floating. You live on a boat, taking orders from a captain. Your captain's always wrong. A stranger appears, you must address. A room wow. that's warm and nice and filled with little ideas for games. You are a gay, trust you to surrender. 
This is like uh, trying to eat you, Peter so Molyneux. Trying to eat the sharks. Kuhn yeah, would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. You walk around talking people down for pursuing their hopes and dreams. These are all very Molly Do <laughs> game suggestions. Yeah. <clears throat> calling this out because Davey mostly works in source. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I mean, I'm wondering if there's some process he would have well, had to go through. this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Go ahead and see if you can get permission it. to sell a game that was using other games. It's the original version of Stanley Parable, where in Stanley Parable that was released, there's that sequence where it drops you into Minecraft. Uh, yeah. Uh, the original version, it dropped you into the first level of Half-Life 2. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. So there's a puzzle. I'm working out some weekend plans with my wife, so I'm glad you're playing. Yeah. So what was the answer to the puzzle? Oh, you're you still were, there. You were told there is a puzzle. Can you, I assume, oh wait, can you not, can you not go to that room or can you? Uh, I can. Do so does not seem to open There's much of anything up. Just kidding. That seemed to be something. I managed to close the door as I walked through it. Oh, and I put the switch on this side. Alright, let me just walk you through. Don't forget that solution, because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. What is three dots? Yeah. Those were, uh, those have appeared before. Uh, yeah, I feel like they're familiar. So that seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve a puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. Alright, now I'm going to modify the game again, so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. What? <laughs> okay. How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game, since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same. Is that most of the time, you don't get to know what you're missing, or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? Oh, well, we're back here again. <laughs> There's probably a lot more to this too, huh? You are now exiting. Aha! Uh -huh. So, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in, some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back, 
and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Wow. Pancake Man's gonna go get some brunch. Enjoy your brunch! I love brunch. Better than Elevensies? Your second breakfast? Oh, I'm not a hobbit. I don't eat those meals. Yeah. Great and lovely descent. This one reminds me a little bit There's of a texture um, over here. I'm gonna look at it. I think it might be a slope. Yeah, it is. What is that? This reminds me of um, oh, what's that siege warfare yeah, see, puzzle here. game? Yeah, it slopes down in every direction. Like I don't know. It kind of feeds you into the yeah. place where your third is supposed to go. All right, I'll go. Uh, <clears throat> I think we should do... Let's uh, talk about video game yeah. development for a second. Sure. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. The tools available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games, to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear, boxy corridors. It's a version of Source that has that bug fix. We can't get up there. <laughs> ah. I think, yeah, for some reason I thought that was more likely to work than the other thing, even though physically there's no reason for me to think that. Well, it's, I mean, it's, this isn't the version of Source where they have a bug where bunny hopping backwards increases your velocity. Which is too bad. What, what's the name of this place? Oh, it was uh, like the Fools. The something Fool? The, the Streetwise Fool. Oh. The, the title of the game was like The Lovely Descent or something along those it, lines. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. This is, this is House of Leaves right here. It's House of Leaves, the game. No, at some point. Or it's, the, it's the end of Half-Life 1. Or uh, Antichamber wound up pretty similar to this. Yeah. Toward the end. I, I did not get that far in Antichamber. Kind of in the Half-Life colors. Whoop. Oh! Nope. Oh! I saw that coming. Ah! Oh. Oh, the falling damage. We're good. Hey, Prophecy187. Good to see you. Hey, guys. Just playing some Beginner's Guide. Weird waiting for descent into the mind of an eccentric game developer. I want to get that thing. Oh, I can't have that. <laughs> I wanted to put that in my yard. Stairs up, blocked, stairs down. So they've closed the gate behind me. So far, Coda strikes me more as a uh, as a level designer. <laughs> like, well, I mean that raises an interesting question. Was the Stanley Parable just level design? Yeah, yeah it's pre I mean, pretty. it's pretty much content. Some, it's, it, most of the interesting stuff going on there was on the content side, not on the mechanic side. Which is fine. That is bo this both our game design. Funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're going to skip that. <laughs> No! We are not having the pure experience. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable. Whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And 
and I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. <laughs> there wasn't. These, these, I like these guys' relationship. I like what we're you know, picking up. Yeah. It actually kind of reminds me of the weird slack flame war that you and I got into the other day. <laughs> My favorite thing about that is I had some people check in afterward and were like, was that real? And I was like, <laughs> I feel like it was really obvious that we were joking. Yeah, no, no. If, if, that, if that flame war had been real, I, I don't know, it just feels like something more would have happened as a result. Yeah. There's those dots. What the crap is that about? Is that a signature? That's, so to me, what those dots are conveying, and I would 100% grant that I am overthinking things. Yeah. Those dots are conveying, uh, this is a work. Mm. Those are being put in there. The signature in every game is a very clear sign to me. Is it kind of like the fake town on a Thomas Guide map or something like that? The solution is the last time. Yeah. Fake locations. There's a name for those, named after a particular one that was famous. Yeah. Because uh. I think wasn't there a, uh, a like there was a there was a famous case of a you know a, some map making company put a, a a location on a map that was just there for copyright purposes and then it became a real and it became a real place yeah people just went and they settled there <laughs> and then they couldn't copyright the map anymore. Right. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. It's, there's definitely an interesting tone going on where uh, Davy is suggesting a bunch of things about Coder. We're not looking at Davy's games. Like, the fact that there's an uh, interlocutor explaining these games and giving us his opinion on them. We don't get to just play Coda's games for ourselves and develop opinions about them. We have... Well, I mean, we're allowed to develop opinions. He can't stop us from developing opinions. Right, but we, we don't get to do it um, un I, interactively. I don't know if I would say get to. I would say have to <laughs> for that. Okay. I, 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 I perf I'm kind of on his side in terms of games being playable, I, and I, I like having a guided tour here. I like this is unlikely to take us more than a couple hours to get there. I, I would agree with you. I do like things to be a guided tour. Here, yeah. Coda begins using Maybe a kind of a dialogue system. I would want to out of the one. engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Um, I'm gonna say it was a world stamp of whiteness. That's the world above. You've been there. Now this is important. Did you have to get through a puzzle with two doors and switches? <laughs> so I'm reading the dialogue because our faces are in front of it. On oh, screen. okay. I'm gonna not tell them. What? You don't understand. You're trapped here. That puzzle is our only escape. We need to get through it. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> oh no, but I do. We do. We need to get there. Do you understand? It's the most important thing in the world. We have to escape this prison. There must be an ending. I promise you, there is nothing I want more. Well, they, they kind of remind me of... Uh, of, of, of me from getting up to them. They remind me of Navi from uh, Zelda for some reason. Hmm. I think it's because of what's on their faces. And... Hello, how did you get here? Was there a puzzle you had to pass through? No, I 
been right here this entire time. <laughs> I've been right here this entire time. I suggest you go and see the puzzle sometime. It's not meant to be solved, but you can sit in the black space in the middle. So they don't think they can get out, they just think it's interesting. Right. Which I, might be based on the stuff I was saying. Uh, what happens if you solve it? Why would I sit in the black space? Who are you? What happens if I solve it? Not sure, but if I have any suspicion, what you find won't be worth what it takes to get there. Did they... Did they just adopt your opinion, or was that always there? I'm not sure. And so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. Spoiler Sometimes I'm a little bit envious of artists who can be satisfied making things that are clearly only for themselves. Like, I, I get really bored doing that. Like, I can't, I can't do it. What's the, I see, this to me feels very much... Are you talking about Coda or Davy? Coda. Coda. Coda can make... Davy's a, making something for us. Yeah. Coda's making something for it's himself. It's a lamppost. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be Pancake leading man. something. It reminded me of Zelda because... He wants a destination. Well, actually, I'll stop. Which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. I was just making fun of the fact that all their faces said listen, and that's what Nabby always says. Listen! Yeah. Hey, hey. listen! Just, so, say I like that We have very different senses of what Nabby's voice was like. Mine was much softer. Yeah, no, my, yeah mine was like, hey! Yeah! As you walk around, you can make notes. All notes you see are left by other players. In just this part of the game? Is it... Nice room. Uh, oh, not? I thought it said but. It was a not joke. Which uh, would have been out of date even at the time. Maybe it was a Borat retro not joke. Oh, man. I said now and then I'll see an so old person enough, I'm sure on you Facebook do something this, like but that. This game is not connected to the internet. All of the notes that you're going to see have been written by Coda. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level. And it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away I was like, I have to be friends with this person. In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too pushy trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over-enthusiastic. But he was very gracious yeah. about it and very patient with me. And I, wonder I, if, off I wonder if this game has achievements. Oh, feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. Either way, Thank you for telling us to that. me they convey a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. But it's ironic, isn't it? That in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. And I have to be honest with you, this idea is really seductive to me. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing. I would like it I could I just could. get to know you through your work. I think this is why I always liked Dakota's games so much. is because it felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely too. So the question is, are we going to try and look at every single one of them? Because um, that would take a long time. It would. I'm going to look at them until I start feeling like I haven't seen anything interesting. <laughs> one man read all of them this summer. 
there's obviously a lot of ground to cover. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that especially because there's people watching us play, <laughs> we should probably not take too long with this. I've seen enough that we're interested in. Sailors are looking for it. Looks like that might be a Shenmue joke. Oh. Tried to shortcut there. <laughs> So a lot, so I think those stone pathways might be inaccessible, and they're just full of lights to make it feel more fleshed out. Yeah. This is like if you're playing Dark Souls with only one feature. So it's interesting. So these are all supposed to be Koda. I'll go back on my own game and look at all of these. They've got, yeah, there's really inconsistent um, voices. Like it's it's hard to sort of write things that you wouldn't say. Like some of them with the you know the poor typing or weird grammar or you know yeah. tweet speak. Some of them don't listen to the other notes. Not safe. Dots. Well, we're definitely not colorblind. Spoilers, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, Taylor points out that he he had heard that there was some tension of the Stanley Parable over two people working this on level, it, the one person getting the credit. Puzzle again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents oh. an idea that was on Cody's mind the at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. It is interesting looking, like, whenever I look at, you know, in my, uh, in my own life, when I have to sort of trick myself into doing there's something this dark I want area to do. Between the doors, oh. a space between spaces, before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. Uh. I think it's worth noting that when he introduced himself at the beginning of this game, Davey referred to himself as the writer of Stanley Parable. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Which is fair. Uh, he didn't just say creator or I made it. Uh, I don't know. Well, that's some creepy audio. Is that typing cool? <laughs> what did that say? How do you leave notes? Since it's been impossible the whole time, the game told you you could, and you couldn't. And they would have the lamp post. Wow. Hey, it's interesting to... The, the idea are you that there? Please say something. It can be anything. I just need you to talk to me, please. Why are you leaving so difficult? Speak, 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 speak. And there's all these wow. typewriters making the notes. Yeah, it always it's kind of interesting to me that the human mind is complex enough that there could be one part of your porn star's okay, diet. This too. one is tough. It's gonna kind of just keep on expressing, but I don't want to minutes. talk over. Hang with it. Okay, I think you're good now. Okay, I won't move for a second. Well, I was, I was just gonna say that it's, it's interesting to me that um, the human mind is complex enough that you can have a part of your mind that's conscious of something you want to do, and the rest of it doesn't want to do it, and the conscious part of your mind has to find a way to trick the rest of you into doing the thing. 
Like, you know, just, I mean, the people, like, when, when they want to diet or something like that, they have to come up with, like, oh, what is the way that I can get myself to diet? You would think, if our minds work the way we kind of expect them to, you could just say, well, I've decided I want to do this, and therefore that is the thing that's going to happen. Right. But it does not work that way at all. And so the, the idea that Coda is using some of these games to make his brain do things. You right. know, to, to, like, close the door on something, to feel, you know, to feel a certain way. He can't just decide to feel a certain way about an idea. So he or builds a game to give himself an emotion. He puts the lamppost at the end so that he can feel a sense of completion. Yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's an interesting idea, and I wonder, I wonder if there's, you know, more I mean, things like that I could be doing for myself. There's to, a certain amount yeah. of healthy and unhealthy versions of that. Like, my, my wife will very consciously be like, I had a rough day, I'm going to eat. A bowl of ice cream. <laughs> yeah. This is self medication. This is me taking care of myself. Yeah, no, th there are times that, yeah, when I when I've talked about like my eating habits solely in terms of the psychological actions that I'm taking. I, I definitely <laughs> my my relationship with food is number one. It's delicious, and number two, it can help me with my feelings. <laughs> yes. And that's yeah. You know. so I haven't seen our three dots yet in this game, but that doesn't mean I'm not convinced they're here. Uh. Video games serve a role like that for me too. Like, sure. They're sort like, of. This is it. Oh. The whole game. And there's nothing that's particularly interesting about it. You just walk to the end of a hallway. Except, for some reason, Cody gets really fixated on this prison that has all of this modern furniture. And I don't know why, but he decides he needs to revisit this prison. He's going to start over, use the same assets, turn it into something else. Okay, cool. Here's version two. So he's reduced where the furniture was. To weird little boxes. And wait, is there a way out? Uh, not yet. Right now oh. we're doing the, oh, the dialogue. I'm going to put a giant hole in the ground. <laughs> okay, Sideways hole? All along the wall. Let's put a, a huge, huge picture, picture of a horse. I really like a washing machine, tent stoves lined up along the wall. Huge picture of a horse. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> Live Tesla coils in each corner. Yeah. But it's going to populate the lamp over there. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I think this is a fridge. I don't remember what was there. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah, sure, a table's worth <laughs> 1935. I'm sure that's true. Yeah. Before that, we just had, we had all spheres. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a bit more to this one, but still, it's not really communicating anything. It, it's kind of just weird for weirdness' sake. Lots of games that I like have been accused of being So, okay, he throws it out and starts over. This time he comes at the prison idea from a different direction. Are we in the prison from THX 1138? That was the creepiest prison ever, by the way. This guide will allow you to escape any prison environment. First click on this so this feels like a very Stanley Parable joke. Ah, uh, there's our dots. Oh, there we go. I feel better now. I think I think it's his signature. Um, but again, I think it's a fake signature created by Davy Reed in, in a game that he made. But I don't know. Interesting. So. Open. Which end of the start we take him back to your prison? And of course, now the table is gone and you can't begin the chain of events to escape. <laughs> 
Here's a version where there are no bars, but you can't actually get to the well. And then a version where the inside of the prison is the outside, and the outside is the inside. <laughs> Let me just blink you real quick through a few more of these. I mean, he really unloaded on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen. Bottom of the well. Personally, I think it's awful to watch this. To see a person basically unraveling through their work. And for what? Like, at what point do you just go, eh, maybe there are game ideas other than this prison that I could be working on. But Coda doesn't have that voice telling you to stop. That particular mechanism of defense against hey, yourself. we've been here before. Without it, you just yeah. spiral. And so he keeps going and going and going and going and going. And then he hits on something. And he likes it. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. This is the very last version of the prison game that he created. And the reason I think <laughs> it works is that the prison is not actually in it. Taylor, we'll have to check that link out later. Yeah. I think he's just a Narnia fan. You're so okay. Pause to talk about Narnia. Uh, -oh. uh when did did you read the Narnia books? Uh, yeah, when I was very young. When you were very young. When did you find out what the deal was with the lamppost? I don't know what the deal is with the lamppost. Did you read all of them? Yeah, I, like, again, I was very young. I forgot okay. a lot of details. And I don't retain details the way you do. Right. So, um, so the lamppost is explained... Well, there's something in the, in, the, in the, like... In the sixth book. Right, the, the origin the story book. I've forgotten. The origin story That was book. the most boring book for me, because mostly just a list of crap that people made. Sure. <laughs> uh, the... The way it is published now, when you go and buy a copy on the shelf... It's first? It's first. That's terrible. It's terrible. That is the worst plan. It's nonsense. Somebody was thought they were being very clever. They were like, oh, oh we're going to put all the books in chronological order. Horse and his boy happens right after uh, uh, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, because that's when it happens in the story. That's and, uh, ridiculous. So, actually, so apparently, there was actually a, um, uh, a... I was going over this on Facebook last night... When I was a kid, um, I found this um, Thorgal uh, graphic novel in my dad's library, yeah. and, and I just absolutely loved it. Uh, I had complete, but by this age, I completely forgot what the title was, and I was looking for it. Uh, and some, uh, Garrett actually helped me find it uh, on the internet and everything. But the thing that was interesting was that the issue that I had read was Thorgal's origin story, yeah. which was actually like the seventh graphic novel in Belgium. But when they translated it into English and published them here, they made it the first one. And so it's a really similar thing. And right. so, so, but for me, it had this weird sort of like kind of creepy quality to it where it's like, you know, I think they were assuming that you knew a lot about this story, but I didn't know anything about it. I was just coming at the, the seventh volume. So it was even more story. mysterious and yeah. fantastic where it's just this sense of depth and mystery in this yeah. world where these people have all these relationships, characters show up, presented like someone you're supposed to recognize, and instead... I feel like as a kid, you have the space in your head for that, and you can just be like, whoa. Yeah, the, the, and as an adult, a lot of times, you're like, who the fuck is that guy? This is badly delivered. Yeah, the thing is, I think that the, the, the C.S. Lewis was intentionally creating that feeling with his sixth book, where he was like, yeah. if you know everything that's going to come in the future, this stuff has meaning. But if you don't know any of that stuff, the book is just weird. It's yeah. just, oh, some, some kids go to this place and a guy makes a bunch of things there's like and then a there's watch. a world it's like reading the second half of the never ending story without reading the first half right it just comes out of nowhere there's some weird texture stuff going on here I'm sure I'm not supposed to care about it as much as I am well that happened. did you just get closed in there? yeah I walked in and it closed and now I can't move the camera or anything hey it's me I'm you from after you escaped the prison <laughs> Only one dialogue option is an interesting choice. That, You're that me? Exasper exaggerates the prison thing. You're me, so you were trapped in this prison too? It's a conversation. Yeah, that was and the so furniture this made is what Kuda wants, is to be able to talk to someone, to share what's on his mind, and to get some good advice from someone who knows. But we're but the, the person who says this in the future? In this scenario, you're still talking to yourself. Yes. You know... All of these games so far are Coda talking to himself. So 
this is another one of those things where this game only makes sense if you actually consider it part of continuity with all the previous games. Yeah, the, yeah, it sort of, it sort of, yeah, makes me wonder. I mean, enjoying this particular game depends on Davey presenting it to you in a certain way. Yes. If he hadn't put us through all that other stuff, this would make no sense at all. Right. And I can see. I mean, if this if this is actually if this isn't just something that Davey just made all these things up, um, then did a lot of work. Then you should <laughs> turn this into something. Yeah. No, it's, either way, somebody did a lot of work. Uh, either Coda did a lot of work that was founded on it's, yeah, it's on somebody having played all of his games. It just doesn't make any sense. Weird. Uh, I'm going to say that I miss being in prison. <laughs> uh, I knew my limits. It's that good though. It's comfortable, but it's inhuman. I couldn't live this way. You don't need to, you just need to be patient. It's way more important than you probably realize right now. You see what I'm talking about when you've been there for a while longer. Lots of you don't need to. Well, if you're me, then did you get a call from another person who would be a trap? <laughs> Tell no, him a lie. I'm the first person to call back. Yes, I did get a call, that's how I escaped. I I kind of want to tell him the truth, that we know we didn't get a... Yeah, I think I'm the first person to call back. Uh, yeah, let Davey teleport you out. Be sincere. <laughs> sincere about what? what? That's exactly what you need to <laughs> I can see why he considers this a fitting conclusion to the prison games. After all of the obsession and frustration, just to be told by someone you can trust that things are going to be okay, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, this is this is a little bit creepy. I'm hoping that I mean, if so if what this would it look like if Coda no. wanted to make a game about Sorry. talking to someone other than himself. I do wonder if you know if Coda is a real human being, how he feels about this or entire if, thing, or if Coda is Davy. To me, this environment is meant to represent this Coda's thing puzzle, a with the two <laughs> doors on either exactly. side and a dark transitional space between. that the quality of the art is a step up from previous games, including this new and improved chat system, which he started using from this point on. From here on out, he begins putting much more effort into the visual polish of his work, and this particular game took two months to create as a result. Does this guy have a day job? They almost can read the text without us reading it now. We could always make me disappear. Clean this whole place. That's the story, little one. Don't you worry now, we'll be through this mess in no time. I promise you'll wish there was more. Why don't I finish up here in the meantime? Please, there's a table. 
Nicely done. Which I mean, my house is way messier than this. <laughs> I want to finish cleaning that room. Aren't you finished? There's tape with the papers on the desk. I'm gonna clean that. Ah, uh, since it's home. Especially cheesy. Yeah, make it especially cheesy. No. It's funny, this does actually kind of remind me of myself a little bit in that I, I get really uncomfortable when there's an expectation that uh, the entire activity somebody's here to do is talk to me. Like, I was like, there should be something else we're doing. We should be playing a game, there should be some food, there should be, you know, it's like this person's sort of... Uh, you know. Taylor's got... Oh, Taylor's saying a bunch of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's a good question. See, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Look at this mess. That's what I wanted to finish. I mean, yeah. the... That's a good question, Taylor. I, I, After the yeah. intense set of prison games, this house cleaning level almost feels like cleansing. I don't feel like I it's could the possibly know. After a particularly difficult or traumatic I want to look into if we could just it is sit and digest real. inside of you. And eventually, cohere into something meaningful. back and clear the dishes off the table, which was the first task. Are all houses this easy to clean? <laughs> Darling, let me tell you something. In your lifetime, you're going to clean a lot of houses. And among those, a few of them will stick out as truly wonderful, beautiful experiences. And none of them will be the ones that were easy. I know that Koda really liked this game. Of all of his work, actually, this was the only one that he called me up to ask me to come over and look at it. This was during a period of a few months where he was, like, grossly happy all the time. Just walked around with a constant smile on his face. So it's just re-triggering chores I've already completed now. Interesting. It's just like... This actually, yeah, it would be very, it's very familiar. I mean, these are jobs that you do have to do every single freaking day. Even the music is really repetitive. I'm gonna say there's a bit of truth in it. can't last. The music stops, your companion is gone, it's time to leave. The door at the top of the hill is now open as well. Again, you can't stay in the dark space for too long. You just can't. You have to keep moving. It's how you stay alive. So if this is a metaphor for creativity and art, 
this was a point at which Coda finished a thing that he was feeling compelled to work on creatively, and he gets to spend some time in the dark space where he doesn't have a thing in his brain trying to get out. But ultimately... Which is the whole point of the puzzle doors, right? That sooner or later you have to pick up and move. I really thought that was the point of it. This one gets a bit goofy. Items you love at members only prices. Okay, I can't do anything but look. I think we're in a motivational speech right now. Yeah, Taylor, happy to. Oh, we moved forward. Yeah, thanks for being here, Taylor. Yeah. So that's a great transition. <laughs> and you play as the teacher. And suddenly, you discover that your teacher is just as bigoted and afraid as you are. Oh, and also you can move around the classroom now. Sort of listen. So I'm going to keep going in the tack the teacher was on. Actually, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to transition to, uh... Can you say all the things? Oh. Kids should not follow their dreams. <laughs> if it isn't effortless, then it's not the right answer. It's the opposite of what we talked about in the previous one, where we were talking about how uh, the most beautiful things come from effort, but the easy ones aren't the good ones. By the way, we uh, I think we are gonna have to be done pretty soon. I think we've been in here for about an hour. Okay. Maybe maybe we try to find a way to. I mean, I don't know. Are, are we allowed to quit this game? Like, I, I, like, does it save? I don't know. Drinking is not hurting my life. <laughs> is he grading out the ones that the teacher doesn't believe? <laughs> it's you, you. If you say it's clearly like the yellow things are the things that would have continued. Uh, on the same tack. On the same tack. The other things are negative, upsetting concepts. I'm gonna, I'd rather be the cis guy than the possessive lover. All right. This <laughs> is some ecstasy after this. Uh. Actually, I like the the on the path to answer for this. The truth is, what if I'm not a good teacher? Every, everyone, run! Because I'm not a good teacher. I felt pretty hard for this one. I feel like it's one of the most relatable experiences that you can have. To uh, assume that some other person is perfect and totally fulfilled in every way and completely miss all of the little flaws that make them painfully human. Yeah, that's true. That is kind of like... I think about this game a lot. People, people complain about that a lot with... Uh, like, Facebook or whatever. Like Yeah, the people who manage to present themselves... The thing is, like, for me, like, I always this just assume... This one took a lot longer oh. than all the others for Coda to make. It was four months between this and the last one. That's twice as long as it took him to make any other game before this. And it's not like it's particularly complex, so I remember I found that a little strange at the time. 
Yeah, we should probably see if we're allowed to quit. Just so because I need to get back. I mean, if you, uh, you know, you want to keep playing, whatever, feel free. But okay, so it does have an idea of what level we're on, so maybe that means it'll save. 